praise God today. We thank the Lord from whom all blessings flow. And in spite of all the storms that take place uh, in the world, Jesus already prophesied and told us these things would happen and take place. We are to look up knowing that our redemption draws nigh. And we don't look up only for ourselves, but we do look up to God in prayer and in some cases with fasting, trusting and believing and expecting God to be still and yet a redeeming father, one full of mercy and definitely full of love. God wants us to learn to love the process. There's a process in the storm. There's a process that we are to learn to love. In spite of our crosses, there is a process that we need to learn to love that process in spite of trials, tribulations, tests, and temptations. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord says to us, he said, there is purpose in the pattern of your process. The pattern is repeated over and over again. There is purpose in the pattern of your process, my process, our process, the earth's process, the nation's process. Amen. The process is to bring us right back. The purpose is to bring us back to the very beginning. God is going to have his way and he is doing various things to get the attention of men and women and children, boys and girls, every person, no matter what your economic status is or your education is, no matter where you come from, where you live in what region of the world, what region of the city, uh, whether you're on the, uh, the base of the continent, it doesn't make any difference. God created it all. The Lord says there is purpose in the pattern of your process. Even when Noah, who uh, built an ark, uh, was doing what he did for years, and there was purpose in that process. He was troubled on every side by the people who lived around him. And yet there was a storm to come that would trouble, bring more trouble. But God gave him direction and God has given us direction because he wants us to bring us back to the place where we have confidence and faith in him. So much so until it doesn't make any difference what the storm is, the trial, the tribulation, the trouble, no matter where it's located, on your job, in your home, in your church fellowship or whatever. Is. God has purpose in the pattern of your process. You are being processed. I am being processed. This whole world is being processed by the power of God in spite of the storms. And the spirit of the Lord also speaks a truth to us. He says, because I am, thus saith the Lord, then guess what? You are. And we respond in kind to God's word, declaring that he is, and he tells us we are. We should say to the Lord, yes, Lord, because you are. I am. Do you notice the two words, I am, and then I am? It reflects each other. Genesis 1.26 reminds us, and God said, let us make man in our image. And after our likeness, and let them have dominion have dominion over the fish of the sea. And certainly if you have dominion over the fish of the sea, I declare in Jesus name, you have dominion over the sea. That's what the Lord says. He's, you get, he's giving you dominion and over the fowl of the air and over, over, over the cattle, over every beast, everything that's creep upon the earth. Hey, God said, God said, I didn't say this. The Lord in his word, his written word tells his logos word. Amen. He swear, he, he declares these words and he is saying in so many words, I am. And because I am, you are. And you and I would say to God, yes, Lord, you are. And therefore I am. I tell you, God is doing a great and a wonderful thing in the earth. And you and I are to declare the wonders of the Lord. In spite of the process, in spite of the trouble and the trial, in spite of the storms, hallelujah. Genesis 126 is a good scripture for you to go back and review it again. I, it turns me to the scripture that also when God said he created us in his image and in his likeness to have dominion over his creation. Ha, 
The only thing that has dominion over us is God himself. And he's declared a dominion statement telling us you are made in my likeness and you are made in my image. And you and I must go through the process, certainly to learn and to know, to love that process. Come on, you and I need to learn to love it. Uh, I want to real quick say, we're going to look at uh, uh, Psalm 82 and the sixth verse. Psalm 82 and the sixth verse. Amen. We thank the Lord for those of you who are on the prayer line, uh, those of you who are on live stream, those who uh, will be viewing this by television and so forth and so on. We thank you for being with us today. The Lord says in Psalm 82, he's still talking about his image and his likeness and his dominion. Uh, he has dominion over us, but we have dominion over everything else. Now, you might find that difficult to believe, but the devil is a lie. God said, and the devil is a lie, and everything the devil says is a lie. Amen. God said, I have said, this is in Psalm 82 and 6. I have said it. Ye are, and it has a little G, gods. And then he goes on to say, and all of you, <laughs> all of you are children of the most high, the one who created, the one who created the process, who have the one who has purpose, the one who has plans in the earth. He says there in the seventh verse, but Here's what he says to us. Ye shall die like men. Now, I'll come to that and explain that more. Let me, I'll explain it right now. Real quick, like, you shall die like men. Like men. Now, at first I call you gods, and then I say you'll die like men. Well, what do you think a trouble and a trial and a test is? It's nothing but a cross, and you're not supposed to put our flesh upon it, in it, through it. That's what dies is our flesh, is, is, is what we have doubt about. You shall die like men. Men shall die. Let the man of you in ma the ad Adamic, the Adamic, Adam's man in you, let that man die. Believe God. Put your trust and confidence and believe God. I don't care what your, tr your trial is, your storm is, doesn't make any difference with God. God said, you shall die. You might as well say yes, Lord, to that too, because Jesus had to do it. And you have to take up your cross and follow him. And you and I have to die also. He said, you'll die like men and you shall fall like one of the princes. Oh, how great and wonderful men are in their lives and in their flesh. And they think they're all that in a bag of chips and the hot sauce to go with it. And the side dish to go with it. He said, you'll die like princes. But you and I have to understand how God is thinking. God is telling you great things, wonderful things about the process. You and I have to learn to love the process. There is a purpose in the pattern. And we're going to talk about that too. Of that process. Dying. He said, you should die like men. And in the eighth verse, he turned around and said, arise. It's like a resurrection. It's like Jesus. Arise. Oh God. And we're giving God praise for this. Judge the earth. Now, when God is telling, when there's a praise going up, we said, oh God, arise and, and be praised in the earth. He says, for all, for thou shalt inherit all nations. That's talking about men and women. Everybody's going to die until Jesus comes back. And we, unless, you, unless he comes back before you, you pass away, have that natural death. But you'll still die because you're going to change. You're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. You will not be in the flesh any longer. And I know in my heart that if some of us thought about it real seriously, and some of us, maybe not all of us, will be uh, kind of questioning, wait a minute, I don't know if I'm ready to go yet or not. Not because of sin, but because we have loved ones back here that we're concerned about. That in itself, when the Lord's will is being done in us, there is a point in place in our lives that we say, I will let the man die and let the God live. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Because that's what the Lord Jesus came back to do. All right. So we looked at that and we want to look at the, not only uh, Psalm 82 and 6, where he says you're God and you'll die like men. And then you'll yet arise because the Jesus who is there, who is the Prince of Princes and the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings and the Messiah, he himself shall inherit all nations. You and I are coming back to the beginning that God established in Genesis 1, 26. Made in his image and made in his likeness. Sons and daughters and children of God. Just like Jesus. Not like Adam anymore. We don't need Adam anymore. We want Adam to die. We don't need him. And therefore, we die in the flesh to the things of the flesh. All right. I want to look at also uh, coming out of John 10, 
10 and 34, 35, and probably 36. Jesus answered them, John 10, 34. Is not it written in your law? We just saw it in 86. I'm sorry. We just saw it in Psalm 82 and 6. Is it not written in your law? Ye are gods. If he called them, meaning if God called you gods, if God says you're gods, <laughs> unto whom the word of God came, the, script, the scripture cannot be broken. It cannot be changed. God says you're God. That cannot be changed. The enemy has tried his best with all kinds of circumstances, events in the earth to try to change your thought like he did Adam when Adam was in the garden. So begin to question God. Uh, uh, is there something's missing in my life? Uh, maybe I'm not like God after all. God, ooh, the devil is alive. You are like God. God said it. He wrote it and he cannot be broken. And he said to them, he says, say ye of him who the father has sanctified, meaning Jesus, and sent into the world. You, you're saying that Jesus was not God? Jesus was God in the flesh. Amen. So we go back to the very beginning and look again at Genesis 1:26. I have, God has said, I have made you in my likeness and made you in my, my image. And because I am, saith the Lord, you are, saith the Lord. And in response, we say, yes, Lord, I am. You say the same thing that he said about himself. I am because you are. Amen. We are already knowing. We are sitting in the knowledge of God. And we know that we have create, he had created us. And God made and processed mankind in his image. Catch the words we just said. He made and created and processed mankind in his image and in his likeness. And in the image of God, he did create, he did make, and he did process us in his image. He made us and he processed us in a pattern. Now, there's a pattern established after the fall in the garden or after the, the fall in Eden. There's a pattern established where the devil still tries to steal, kill, and destroy. He did it in the garden. He's still around today. God's going to use for your good the things that the devil has abused you with. Amen. He created us. He processed us. So he processed us in his pattern. God has processed us in his pattern. In us is found God's pattern. God's pattern of living is found in us. In us is discovered God's plan. Not just salvation, but God's plan to, for you and I to come declare and have dominion in the earth. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, let's look at some more. God's design, his design and purpose is to show the world. <laughs> His process, through your process. Okay, let's say that again. He wants to show the world his process, his plan, his thoughts towards you to the world. He wants to prove himself through your cross. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> through Prove himself. Amen. Let's look at John 10.10. 10. You know the scripture already, John 10.10. 10. We talked about the devil and how he came to do his business and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we rebuked the devil and he's a liar forever. The devil is a liar forever. Amen. In John 10, 10, Jesus declared, said, the thief, that devil, he came not but to steal, stealing people's livelihood in Florida, stealing people's livelihood in Texas. He come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the Lord says, I am come. This is what Jesus says about that. Now, Jesus said, I came to give life. He said, I came uh, to get, that you and I might have life, abundant life, and that you might have it more abundantly. So what do we need to do? He said might. Now, I believe, <coughs> excuse me, I believe when he said might, it depends on whether or not you're willing to take up your cross and follow him. You might take it up and you might not. You might follow him and you might not. It's your choice just like it was for Adam in the garden. When you and I first came to Jesus, we had a might moment. It meant that you had to confess in your heart, believe in your heart, and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that God has raised him from the dead. I tell you what, it doesn't stop at that time when you first came to the Lord. It continues on and on. You have to believe in your heart, confess it with your mouth. What thus saith the Lord? If the Lord said you are God's and you die like men, and then he's going to raise you up again, you and I must declare what God said. I am, says the Lord, and the Lord says to you, you are because I am, and you should say back to him, yes, Lord, 
I am because you are. Don't you dare doubt God. He said, I come and give you life and I give it to you more abundantly that you might. Now, you don't, don't stay in the might. Go on and press forward in spite of the cross, in spite of your troubles, in spite of your trials, in spite of the storms. God says, go on and be as I have created you like God, your children of God. That tells you back there in 86, 86, I mean, I'm sorry, 82, Psalm 82, verse 6, 7, I believe. Now, <clears throat> again. Yes, the devil, the thief, he has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life that you might have it. You might have it. Don't you, don't stop at the mic, jump over the mic, and get into the mic. <laughs> I hope you understand what I'm saying. Get into the power. Get into the authority. Get into the, uh, uh, the anointing. Uh, let that be your might. Not your might. Your doubt might. Your real might. <laughs> that God gave to you. Huh. Ha. Yes, Lord. He has designed you. He has purposed you to go through the process. It's a pattern. It repeats over and over again. Hallelujah. The devil, uh, over and over again, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Storms come over and over again to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus comes back and he says, okay, go ahead and die to yourself. Die to what you see. Die to what you hear on the news. Die to that. Listen to what the word of God says and live and you shall not die. I tell you, God's got a great work going on. That's a process. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. There's a pattern in the process over and over again. How many times every time about this time of year you have hurricanes? You can almost predict it. Jesus already predicted it. Every year around this time of the year, there's going to be some hurricanes. He said there will be uh, wars and wounds of wars in diverse places. Look at the people over there on the other side of the Pacific talking about throwing up missiles and all this stuff. Hey, don't you let your heart be troubled by this stuff. It ain't nothing but a storm. You have to overlook and oversee these things and see that God is taking you through a process. And you and I need to learn to love the process. It's a cross. It hurts. It, it, it does not feel good. It does good, feel good to see and know these things are happening around us. But we need to learn to love the process of bringing us back to the image of God. Yes, I have come that you will have life. And in other words, you're going to have my life. My life. And you're going to have a life like mine. Thus saith the Lord, I'm going to make you again like in my image and in my likeness. But there's something that's got to die called the flesh. That's part of the pattern of the process. It's got the, the flesh has to die and faith has to live. There is purpose in that pattern of your process and my process and our process. I think and I've heard I've heard several people say the reason why God allows these things to happen is to bring people back to their knees. He allowed the children of Israel to be gone into captivity because they, they just simply disobeyed. They didn't even choose the might of God, but they, do, they chose to use the question of the might. Might God do this? Might God do that? God has already done it. He wants you to believe it. There's a purpose in the pattern of your process. Father says, because I am, you are. And we should say, because you are, oh God, I am. Jesus said that he had come to give you life abundantly. So there's an abundance, abundance of, of, these, of these patterns, abundance of, 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 of the thief coming to steal, kill. And, abund and the Lord just turns around and says, ah, I come to give you life abundantly. The devil comes to steal and kill abundantly. But I have come to give you life. Ye are God in the earth. You better go ahead and declare it for yourself in the name of Jesus. Don't you be shaking and don't you be scared of it. You're not supposed to be scared because you are because he is. Jesus said, I come to give it to you more abundantly, giving you this power more abundantly. You, we already know that the enemy hates God, but he also hates us because we're made in his likeness. <laughs> if he could get into heaven, he would go back there and disturb it, but he can't get in. So he hangs around here. Yeah, uh, going to and fro in the earth, doing what he can do, trying to make you. And he's trying to get at the heart of God by getting at us. We are the apple of God's eye. But God has made us such an apple of his eye until he has declared not only to the you and me, but the devil knows that you're God's in the earth. That's how come he can't take you out. One of the reasons he can't take you out because God's precious love is upon us. Learn to love the process. You got to, you got to, you got to, 
pay attention to God's word. Whose report shall you believe? The journalists on television? The half of them people, they don't know nothing about God. Most of them don't until trouble comes and all of a sudden they want to turn to him. But you and I, we know who we are in Christ. The enemy attacks from every kind of direction. He attacks from every kind of way that the enemy he could possibly imagine. He does it all. But he can't do anything that God doesn't omnisciently already know about. And because your father, my father in heaven already knows about it, you and I, we're supposed to say, I will not let my heart be troubled. He is, therefore I am. I have confidence and faith in my God. I believe. What shall we do that we might destroy the works of the devil? Believe in the Lord your God. Ooh, Jesus, bless your name. There's a pattern of attacks. But God says, I got a, a pattern of blessings. Learn to love the process. Nobody really likes a cross until you decide to die on that cross and in that cross. And the cross, if you stood the cross straight up, it would four point heavenly, earthly, and around the world as well. If you was to take a cross and you lay it down flat, it's still it's looking up, looking down on the backside of the cross, and then it's pointing in all four directions of the four winds of the earth. If you took the cross and you stood it on the short side and the long side, where it's like this and that, it's still pointing what sides of it are pointing up, sides of it are pointing down, and the other four is still the four sides are still pointing in every direction of the earth. I'm telling you, it's all over the world. The cross is all over the world, but you and I have learned the process. The purpose of the pattern of the process. The purpose of the pattern of the cross. The cross is a pattern. It's a cross. It's a pattern. There's people identify you by your cross. They know who you are in Christ because of your cross. Because you are overcomers. Hallelujah. The pattern. The Lord speaks to us three times. Now, wait a minute, Pastor. Pop, apostle. Three times. He spoke three times about take up your cross and follow him. Three times. He says it in Matthew 16, 24. I'm not going to turn to it. You do it. Matthew 16, 24. The Lord said, take up your, he, in that verse, he says, take up your cross and follow me. Mark 8, 34. He says it again. Take up your cross and follow. In Luke 9, 23, he says it again. Take up your cross and follow me. You can bear it because I gave you the power and the million to bear it. Stop saying, I can't handle it. I can't stand it. The devil is alive. God said, take it up. Okay, he says repeatedly. If he says it repeatedly, it means it's continuous. If you have a tendency to find yourself there and looking at crosses and terrible things happening in the earth because of all whatever is going on, it's just a repeat. It's a pattern, a repeated pattern. And you and I are supposed to walk in the repeated pattern, taking up a cross and following after him. Now, in that journey... Is a process. The process, the intent of the process is to change your image and your likeness again in the earth and be who God has made you to be. I believe in him. There's a purpose in the pattern of your process. Follow Jesus right back to your image that God had created you in from the very beginning. Go back to the purpose to follow him. No matter how long it appears to take, go back and take up your cross and follow him. Uh, it's yours. It's mine. You have a cross. I have a cross. All of us, all over the world, we're supposed to show that God has manifested himself in his sons and daughters. The world is waiting for your manifestation, that you have dominion and authority and power in earth, that the keys of the kingdom has been placed in your hands. But there's a part of us that has to die. We have to die to the flesh. That's part of the pattern. That's part of the cross. That's part of the purpose of the process, the purpose of the process. It's right there in the middle of it. Purpose, <laughs> pattern, the cross, and process. It's in the middle of the process of the purpose. But now, today, the process is recreated because of Jesus, and the process is your journey. It is the process of being made over, to be made over, to be made over again. <laughs> Excuse me. Our cross is designed, the trouble is designed, the storms are designed <laughs> so that you and I can die to our flesh and die to our self-will. 
So then you and I can die to our self image. You know, we got images of ourselves, of who we are, who we think we are. The man thinks he is anything and he needs to learn to know that he is nothing. That's every man. That's me too. But you still have to know your office that you're called into and submit yourself to God and still bring God's word to people. Sometimes people just don't want to hear it. They don't want, I hate to say this, but there's some people that don't want to grow. There's some of us, I, I declare this about me. I didn't even want to go, let alone grow. But, I, but, 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 but when you submit, you submit to God, God will make you grow. Even now, the Lord has blessed us to start learning and studying new things about things that we didn't know about. That's present in the earth today that God is using to reach the unreached. We have people who are unreached there next door to us, across the street, on our job. But see, the Lord is letting you go through your cross so that they'll see it. They'll know it because some of them bring it to you. Some of them come to steal your joy and to destroy your life. But see, when you go and love the process, oh, I look beyond the cross and I see what God has planned for the purpose of his thoughts, which is not only in me, but his purpose of his thoughts towards the earth. Therefore, I will enjoy it. I will be like Jesus. I will gladly take up my cross and be like Paul said. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities. That's what cross is all about, your infirmities. He said, I'll be joyful in it. I'm going to take up my cross. I don't think it's strange that uh, something like this is happening to me because I know what it really is. The really is behind the agenda is so that I will be made in his likeness and be made in his image. I will learn to love the process. And because he said, I am, and told me that I am him too. He's in me and I'm in him and we're one. Now, he said, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you, never. And Paul said and wrote, uh, who or what shall separate me from this love, from this purpose, from this pattern, from this calling, hallelujah, from this process. Nothing is going to separate me from the process of God taking me back to what his thoughts were towards me. Because he says, I am, you are. Yes, you are. Remember, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And Paul said, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. And let's look at Jeremiah 29 and 11, which is a favorite scripture. Most of us, we already know that. Most of us love that scripture. We love the scripture. We just don't love the process. Hmm. In Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the thoughts. I know the plan. I know the process. I know the purpose. <laughs> I know the pattern because I designed it saith the Lord. i throwing this in here for commentary so you will see it deeper. God spoke to this about his planned purpose in us, his planned purpose in us, which was even discovered and known and seen in Genesis 126, made in his image and made in his likeness. Jeremiah spoke God's word. He wrote it too, so you and I can see it today. And it's, it's a favorite scripture. We like to quote it, but will we live it? Hmm. He spoke about God's pattern. God's image in us, which is found in God's thought process. I know the thoughts. I know the process that I think towards you, as saith the Lord. It is thoughts of peace to bring you into harmony and oneness with God. So you and I can be one with the Lord, that we will be made in his likeness and in his image, sanctified, purified. Amen. Through the fiery trials. Hmm. I know it, 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 that these thoughts, I know this design, I know this process. I set it up, I planned it, and I will, God bless the Lord, I will have my way. And then uh, he says here, and there are thoughts that are not evil, even though your cross appears to be evil, even though your trials appears to be evil. And yeah, well, it is evil. Evil against what? Evil against our self-will, self-flesh, me, 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 my, 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 nobody else, just me. I ain't thinking about nobody but my trial. I ain't thinking about nobody but my trouble. I ain't thinking about nobody. Get out of here. Cut it. Stop it. Learn to know that you are going through for somebody else. You're not going through just for you. You're going through so God can make you more powerful, more, more knowledgeable, can increase your understanding and your knowledge, not just for you. You're satisfied where you are, some of us. God said, I'm not satisfied with where you are. I want to give you abundant life. I want to add to you. I want you not only, you bore fruit, praise the Lord. I want 
you to bear more fruit and I want you to bear much fruit. But sometimes we got to go back and just be humble again and be taught again about what's going on today in our lives around us. That was always not a TV. I remember what, I ain't going to go into that. Leave that alone. He spoke his pattern and his image in us. And it's repeated over and over and over again. I don't care what the inventions are. I don't care what the uh, new knowledge is. I don't care how far technology goes. The Lord's plan has not changed. He uses these things that man designed in the earth. He uses them for his purpose. He uses them for his plan. Because there are some people, I already understand, we just learned it this this week. The wife and I have been attending some, some more school. Yes, yeah, some more schooling. We, we don't mind being schooled. We have learned that, uh, that there are going to be so much change in the earth that those who don't change with the changes to understand how to use God's word and how to apply his word, we cannot be able to reach the people that are yet growing up. Our grandchildren, they're not going to pay any attention to us. But they might go to look at their little cell phone and stuff like that, the new phones, iPads, whatever it's going to be, and God will speak through those things, just like he spoke through a Bible. Printed Bibles weren't always printed. They were scribes that wrote it by hand. Everybody didn't have access to the Bible because it was not a printed edition. It was not printed and then distributed on a multiple wide scale basis until we had the printing press, which was in Germany. I, I can't remember what it was called. I can't remember right now, nor the year, but it was after that. But we're going beyond just the printing press now. And God's purpose and plan, and it might be difficult to change. Oh, yeah, it's hard to change. I have to declare it myself. I, that's some stuff that I got to learn that I don't really, I don't relish it. But if it's for God's purpose in the earth, I'm willing to die. And I'll let him fix it for me. Even the cross, it is your process. The change. It is a changing. It's a change that's taking me. A change has come over me. Oh, what a great change to be able to say, I love your process, God. God said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts that are not evil. It might feel like evil. You might not want to do it. You might not want to go. You might be involuntarily pulled into it and called into it. The changes that you're called to, even I, even the cross itself, it seems to be evil. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to know. I don't want to learn. Then that's the, then, then, then that's, that's as, far as, as far as we can go. We just only go as far as we know. We know, we go. And then we stop there until we go further and know more. And, and we can do more. All right. Something, it feels like it's evil, but it's not. It feels like death, but it's not. It appears to be an evil death on our flesh, and it is an evil death on our flesh. It is an evil death on our self-will. Our flesh has to die again and again. Let me say that again. Our flesh has to die again and again. It's resurfacing the purpose of life uh, as we die. As we die again and again, this is going to sound strange to some people. That means you're going to be born again. You're going to be made new again. It means you're going to be refreshed again. You're going to have <laughs> water to drink again. Waters and rivers of living water so deep that you had even know you didn't even know it was in you. It's already in there, but God wants to bring it out. I, I love this thought that God has already placed within us dominion and authority and knowledge and understanding, but now He has to manifest it in us as we surrender ourselves to Him. Let God help you to surrender your thoughts and, and surrender your plans and surrender your design, and surrender your purpose towards his. Amen. His eternal image is a continual future changing taking place. Continual future. It's an abundant future. He says to give you eternal abundant living hope. Eternal abundant living hope. It's alive today. The hope is alive in you. The hope of Christ that dwells in you. Amen. And the hope of God, his thought towards us is the same that was found in the Genesis 126. It has not changed. What happens is this. God doesn't change. He changes things and he changes us who help to ch him to change things in the earth. <laughs> yeah, Lord, because you are, I am. Therefore, I will take up my cross. I will. We should be able to declare this. I will take up my cross, Lord, and I will. Sometimes we pray all kind of prayer, but sometimes maybe we need to pray. I will take up my cross. Lord, I will take up my cross and I will. Follow. Let the Lord know your heart. You got to give us a new heart. If you're going to be a new man, 
I have to admit that I, I, I look forward to living longer and that I have to realize this new changes are coming my way in me and yet filled with the power of the spirit of God. I want to see God do this work. So I'm learning to love the process. I want to say to you, learn to love the process. Learn to love the process of change. Learn to learn the process of surrendering. Learn to love the process. I will surrender. I will seek the Lord today. Now, now is the day. Still, it is now the day. It is not like it was before. One time we just had to hear the, the chief priest speak to us, but God is speaking through us through so many voices today. I'm not talking about the devil. I'm talking about God is speaking to people today who are found in so many different regions. So I ask you in Jesus name that you and I learn to love the process, learn to know that there's purpose in the pattern. It's repeated over and over again. Learn to know the purpose of the pattern in your process and learn to know that God's purpose is to bring you back to the place as God in the earth. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for your word and we thank you that you, in spite of everything that we experience that's troubling on every side, you're constantly bringing us to know you in a greater way. You're bringing us to know you in a holy way. And we thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. And we ask you to give us the strength to love, to sacrifice ourselves to you, to love, to surrender to you, to love, to go with you, to, to love, to take up our cross and see beyond it and despise the shame of it that the world is looking at. The world sees it like a shame, a shame, a shame. But we see it as a change. And we're thanking you for this great change that's taking place in our lives in the name of Jesus as you carry us higher and deeper and wider. We pray in the name of Jesus. Let every heart say amen and amen. Mm -hmm.